Hi, I'm Dr. Jared Gardner, and I'm here today with my awesome dermatology and pathology residents, and we are going to be discussing some fibrohistiocytic and spindly uh, skin lesions. So this is uh, case one. Who would like to take this? I can take this. Okay. So we see a kind of deep lesion here with the uh, uh, very fibrotic background, but I think there is like it is already stained kind of. Yes, yeah, good. Yeah, it's kind of confusing if you've not been told this is not an H and E. So this looks like uh, elastic stain. Good. And uh, uh, so this this gives an appearance of like beaded elastic fi elastic fibers, and uh, so with this background and with all this beaded elastic fiber appearance. And with the fact that there was also some like fatty tissue also, yep. so this this should be good for elastic fiber. You know? Yeah, and very they, good. They occur usually on the back as the they are for like full visible as the fibromatose size. Very good, good job, Rahil. Yes, this is this is an elastofibroma dorsi, and it from low power on. We don't have the H and E here, but on the H and E, it's very boring. It looks just like kind of non nondescript uh, pink collagen, uh, you know, fibrous tissue um, with with very low cellularity, and it's kind of intermingled with some fat, some adipose tissue. And I have a, a better picture here that I'll show you. And so the, I I don't have the low power, but at low power it's just like pink collagen and then fat. But as you go higher, even on H and E, you can see these amazing beaded or like kind of almost like pipe cleaner, you know, those long brushes that they use for kids' art projects, um, that they have that kind of look. Uh, the collagen is very beaded and bunched up if you look at it in longitudinal section. And if you look in cross section, they look kind of like almost like little flowers or florets. And uh, here is a closer look at a, a more crisp uh, elastic stain, also known as Virhoff von Giesen, VVG. And so there you can see that's the longitudinal cut of the elastic fibers. And then here's the cross-sectional view. So they look very different on cross-section versus longitudinal. And like Rahil uh, said, these almost always, the vast majority occur on the back, usually like the tip of the uh, inferior tip of the scapula and often kind of between the scapula and the underlying rib cage. So probably something to do with the motion of the scapula rubbing against the rib cage that creates this. I don't see these very often because they're usually recognized radiographically, and I, I, it seems like they only get removed if they become large enough or, or uncomfortable enough to cause symptoms for the patients, but usually it's an obvious diagnosis to the, to the orthopedic surgeon and the radiologist, so I only see them occasionally when they're uh, removed. And supposedly they can occur, occur in other sites in the body, but I've only ever seen them um, under the, the tip of the scapula. That's, that's the place I've seen them. So elastofibroma uh, dorsi, very good. Any questions?